Welcome to the Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your Monday Night Raw results and uh, WWE Main Event results. Happy birthday goes to Jeff Hardy celebrating his 41st birthday. And he also posted a video of the charismatic enigma applying his face paint to sleep. Also, birthdays on the 31st. Mickey James, she was born in 1979. Ember Moon was born in 1988. September 1st birthdays, Mad Dog Wachong. He was born in 1929. Bam Bam Mickle was born in 1961. Rock of Rock was born in 1953. Sam Snooker was born in 1971. Doug Williams was born in 1972. Solomon Crow of NXT. He was born in 1987. Uh, September 2nd birthday, Tracy Smothers. He was born in 1962. Uh, September 3rd birthdays, to close out this week's birthdays for from Monday Night Raw video. Mrs. Cleavage, she was born in 1969. T.J. Perkins was born in 1984. Hall of Famer, DDP, will be appearing on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast one day next week. Rogan's website also has uh, Brock Lesnar listed as an upcoming guest. Renee Young called, uh, called Raw episodes for the second time this summer as Jonathan Coachman was off doing his filming for the Golf Channel at the Windstar World Casino and Resort in Oklahoma. Also filming on Tuesday. <clears throat> Big Cass uh, took, uh, joined Booker T's. He did discuss his podcast over the weekend to talk about his current relationship with his former tag partner, Enzo Amore. You know, certified G. Bona fide stud. And you can't do that. Uh, the two began working together in a team back in 2013, becoming one of the most popular tag teams for the company at the time. The duo would move on, move to Raw just after WrestleMania 32 with another solid run, despite never capturing the tag titles. The WWE then decided to break Cass and Enzo up in 2017 after Cass admitted that he attacked Enzo backstage, citing his frustrations of having to team with him for years. And the interview could be kind of ominously. Enzo will head off to 205 Live where he will win the WWE Cruiserweight Championship while Cass' singles run will come to an end after tearing his ACL. That will keep him out of action for a month. And WWE released Enzo back in January for rape allegations that he was later cleared of. Cass will also be released from WWE in June, reportedly for personal conduct issues and other behavioral problems. During his interview on heated discussions, Cass was asked if there is going to be a reunion with Enzo in the near future. Cass didn't think so. No, what me and him did was very special. It was special in NXT. It was special in WWE. Cass said, I feel like it ran its course. And they pulled the trigger and on, on separating us at the right time. Unfortunately, I got injured. But they pulled the trigger at the right time. Me and him, we don't keep... Keep in contact. We're not friends. So I just don't think that's going to be a possibility. Cass did step back just a bit with, a, with the old saying, never say never, allowing for the possibility of a run down the road. Well, let me tell you something, Booker. Booker. Well, it talks talk like Hulk Hogan. Well, let me tell you something, brother. If the money's right, you know, Cass continued, but at this time, point in time, I haven't been fielded any offers from anybody and laughs they, they say never say never maybe one day him and I will be reunited and me and him will be great friends we'll just take it take the world by storm but right now I don't think there's a chance name uh, Cass talks about his release I made a lot of mistakes in a very short period of time Enzo is now going by the name of real one and has moved into the music world. Cass was asked about what he thought about Enzo's rap skills, but the former WWE star said he had no idea that Enzo was actually a rapper. He laughed, no I haven't. Is he? No I haven't heard that. Booker, you're kidding me. Is he really? Good for him. Is he really one of the hottest rappers right now? Booker T found it a little hard to believe that Cass hasn't seen anything that Enzo has been doing. But Cass said he hasn't, and would have uh, would have to check it 
Check that out. No, I didn't know he was that well. Look, I wish him nothing but the best. And if he's doing that well, good for him. I had no idea. Maybe after this interview, I'll give it a listen. But I didn't know he was killing it right now. The Rock took to Twitter and wrote the following congratulatory, congratulatory message to Cody Rhodes for his NWA World Title win at Saturday's All-In event. At Dwayne The Rock Johnson at The Rock, congratulate, congrats, my friend. So effing cool. That's some real legacy and history you're now part of. Proud of you. Your pops, your pops is looking down and smiling. Big. Hashtag 10 pounds of gold. Hashtag NWA heavyweight champ. WWE Network has added even more episodes of All-Star Wrestling to the vault section. WWE announced the following blurb for the edition. Just added to WWE Network. 66 episodes of All-Star Wrestling. This month, exclusively on WWE Network, enjoy 58 new hours of one of WWE's very first weekly televised series, All-Star Wrestling. Harken back to the famed Hamburg Fieldhouse in the early 80s and witness the origins of the WWE Hall of Famers like Pedro Mar Morales, Jesse DeBali Ventura, Sergeant Slaughter, Hulk Hogan, and many more. Also, wrestling dominated the air race for 15 years and was at the forefront of expanding the exposure of WWE across America. Defy Wrestling returns this Saturday with Defy Club. Seattle Wrestling from the historic Washington Hall. The show will feature the finals of the Defy 8XGP Tag Team Championships, as well as the return of ECW legend Tommy Dreamer, former knockout champion Allie, Chelsea, Chelsea Green, Jeff Cobb, and Matt Cross are some of the other names scheduled to appear. Tickets on sale at DefyWrestling.com. This event is 21 over with ID. Former ECW champion Jesse Crudwell recently launched his podcast, I Hate This Podcast, which is available on Audioboom, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and iTunes. You can also check it out at CrediblePod.com. Empire State Wrestling will be in action at the Falling Leaf Festival in Salmonaca, New York, on Friday, September 28th, featuring former WWE stars Shannon Moore and Colin Delaney. The event is free of charge and will be located near the corner of Main and Broad Streets, next to Rite Aid. The family-friendly event start Starts at 5 p.m. In addition to more and delay, ESW regulars such as reigning ESW Interstate Champion Anthony Gaines, Kevin Bennett, Daniel Garcia, and several more stars are scheduled to, to appear. Special attraction women's match with its competitors will be announced soon. Texas Mega Church Pastor Ed Young of Fellowship Church in Grapevine will be interviewing top wrestling stars for his new Wrestling Sermon Series. WWE Hall of Famer Sting, Ric Flair, Ted DiBiase have, all, have also been announced, along with none other than The Undertaker. And you can see that at this link. And this is a four-week series kicking off on Sunday, September 9th. The main stage uh, at Fellowship Church will have a wrestling ring constructed on it with one side open so the congregation can see the pastor and the wrestler being interviewed. Wrestling, a series by Ed Young, beginning September 9th, 2018. Over four weeks this September, Ed Young and Fellowship Church become, uh, welcome four legacy guests, uh, legendary guests from the world of professional wrestling, Ric Flair, Undertaker, Million Dollar Man, and Sting. The Bible often compares the Christian life to that of a warrior, a wrestler. Wrestling is a metaphor commonly used in the Christian life and one that will remind us that no matter what, God is re ready and able to step in between the ropes and help us overcome any challenge we face. Kenny Omega spoke, uh, spoke with Sports Illustrated Extra Mustard section on wanting a memorable title run, finding inspiration for his 30-minute 30, his 30 matches, and if he could be himself if he went to WWE. And here are some of the highlights. Where he finds inspiration for storytelling in the ring. I know we get to a certain emotion at, at a certain point, but the trick is knowing how to get there. We have a very physical performance art. A lot of times when you want to achieve 
a certain emotion, you have to use professional wrestling ingredients, which are moves or a sequence of moves. I'm looking for that range of emotions. A lot of my main event matches will last around half an hour mark. If you can have a variety of emotions with it, with that half hour, that's great. Story from start to finish. That's why I love my old school superhero cartoons, and the old school animated Batman series was great for that. I love using that as a focal point on how to structure a story properly. It's universal storytelling where a child can find enjoyment and inspiration, and an adult can understand and enjoy the deeper things behind it as well. Writing a memorable run as the IWGP Heavyweight Champion? I've seen so much in the past, especially with foreign champions, where, of course, a title reign will always go down in history, and you can't change that. AJ Styles won the belt. MVP was the first ever IWGP Intercontinental Champion. I hate to say it, but all of those, all these title reigns have been forgotten. It's almost as, a, as if they don't exist. All the work was put into them somehow became forgettable. A lot of people, especially pro performers in wrestling, feel that winning the title is the only statistic that matters. But it's always about the journey. If you don't have the people behind you, believing in you, and the start of a new chapter after winning the title, then you don't have anything. The fantasy matchup. He could have if he went to WWE, if he could remain as Kenny Omega. I realize that, I realize that there are people that are employed by that promotion that I could have a good match with. There are people with that promotion where, if I had that said match, could generate multiple communities celebrating the performance. That's what happened when the Bucks and I did the gaming battle with the New Day. If I wrestled one of their top guys, people would watch them, that match in the anticipation of something great happening. But right now, it's all what if. Fantasy, fantasy, fantasy scenarios. It's going to stay that way until it happens. If it ever happens, because you never know what type of limitations are going to be placed on those matches. If Kenny Omega is allowed to be Kenny Omega, then those matches would be really special. Would I be allowed to be myself, the real Kenny Omega, within that realm? In a way, it's almost more exciting to think about what it could be rather than to see what it would be. Omega also discussed Chris Jericho and more about winning the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. And you can check out the full interview by clicking this link. Hall of Famer Scott Hall missed last Sunday's rival pro wrestling one year anniversary show in Pomona, California due to a medical emergency. No word yet on what was wrong with the bad guy, but he has not issued any comments on what happened. And here's a statement from the promotion that issued it. Issued it. As we all know, health is a key and comes first. Earlier this week, we were contacted by Gemini Sports Cards informing us that Scott Hall had a medical emergency, but will keep us updated on his status for the show. This was released by Gemini Sports Cards and Scott Hall. Dear wrestling fans, we regret to inform you that Scott Hall will not be able to make his appearance for the rival pro first ever anniversary show, Summer Rising. Unfortunately, due to a medical emergency, Scott will not be, uh, be able to travel. We are working on a possible date to reschedule. Scott's health is most important at this time, and we wish him the best. Scott loves his fans and is upset. He can't make the show, but as we said, his health is more important, and we are working on rescheduling with him. Regards, Gemini Sports Cards. Us here at Rivals Pro Wrestling would like to send a quick prayer out to Scott Hall. And wish him a speedy recovery. We deeply apologize to all the fans that were coming out to see Scott. To all who have purchased a meet, meet and greet ticket Gemini Sports Cards. We'll be offering a credit to his next scheduled appearance at Rival Pro. Any all, all questions, please address to rivalprowrestling at gmail.com. This has been a rough, and, a rough road to a, a one year anniversary celebration. Our original main event for the Rival Pro, Rival Pro Championship was postponed due to both opponents' flight schedules and being out of the country. Now a medical emergency to the bad guy himself. This will not stop us from having one hell of a show, and we hope to see you all, all this Saturday at Rival Pro. One year anniversary. Big Cat's first independent appearance has been announced. 
He will be appearing at Big Time Wrestling's upcoming event on Friday, September 21st at Spartanburg Memorial Auditorium in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He was initially advertised as Big Kaz, but the updated roster now has him as Big C, and he will be taking on Cowboy Jane Storm. And at its rim, you can see the whole card of the event. Cass was released by WWE on June 20th, 2018, so with 90 days, no compete as far as the day before the appearance. Emma, real name, Tennille Dashwood, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Ming, the Barbarian, Tommy Dreamer, James Ellsworth, and WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley are also advertised for the show as well. As uh, Hacksaw is uh, scheduled an appearance, I think he's in wrestling action, as well as Ming and the Barbarian in action. And you can check out the poster at that uh, link. Earlier, earlier this month, John Cena told fans he will be unveiling a new six move of Doom. That's after the first live event in Shanghai, China. Cena's first, uh, Cena's five moves of Doom, including a fly, flying shoulder block, set out hip toss, side release spin out power bomb, five knuckle shuffle, attitude adjustment. These moves have brought Cena plenty of wins, but now it might have been, might be time to add another powerful maneuver to his list. Thanks to his Project X training, Cena says he will be debuting a new, a new move next time we see him. And he, he had to, uh, that at a uh, at an event over the weekend. And he comments, well, with my studies here at Jackie Chan Training Center, I have been able to work with some students and teachers and modify skill. Cena said he has adopted a new move that will pay my homage to the martial arts he learned under the tutelage of Jackie Chan Training Center. Cena touted his new move's powerful nature and Chinese influence as something we will be proud. He will be proud to debut. I've seen the move. I'm not impressed. Not only th uh, this is a new maneuver that has a true foundation in Chinese culture, with I am, which I am very proud of because I'd love to pay respect to my experience here, as Cena said, but the new move is extremely powerful. So I'm excited to debut something I've learned here. So maybe I can take a piece of my Chinese experience back to the ring. Well, Cena did indeed show off that move on Elias, and it was a back fist to the face with some theatrics before throwing the strike. Uh, Cena would pin Elias to get the victory, which you can see in the link. Uh, and to me, it's nothing more than a karate shot. Uh, Cena is scheduled to appear at the WWE Super Show down in Australia in October, on October 6th, where he will team up with Bobby Lashley, also to take on Elias and Kevin Owens, who quit last week, but returned on this week's Raw. Uh, with Owens quitting on, on this week's, uh, uh, this past week's episode, it's possible Elias' partner could change. Brutus Beefcake autobiography, Strutting and Cutting, was released. And Barber recently spoke to why it ended about his career and some of the more interesting aspects of his WWE journey. Beefcake's character was initially that of an erotic dancer before he donned his famous hedge clippers and it took on a new life of its own. He didn't understand the character at first, but in time Beefcake became extremely popular, which he credited in part to his unique name. They had no idea what Brutus Beefcake was. They just came up with a name. Beefcake said, Honestly, I thought the name was really crazy. Brutus Beefcake. Just completely off the wall because sometimes that is the best thing you can do is go off the wall. And the name Brutus Beefcake became a worldwide sensation. And it's a name you don't forget. Brutus Beefcake. Uh, here I am the pro in the pro wrestling business, which I... I was seven or eight years into it, and then now I'm going to have to have my name picked, and this name will be my name for the rest of my life. Well, it would have been my entire life if circumstances didn't change, becoming other characters in WCW, but after all these years, it really doesn't matter. But Bruce B. Kate, Bruce the Barber, B. Kate, just crazy. Beefcake experienced a tragic accident while his run in Vince McMahon and, and company was still going strong. He had a paralyzing accident while he was standing on the beach 
and the driver of, of the boat mistook a cue to accelerate, causing Beefcake's friend to smash him in, into the face with their feet. Beefcake, Beefcake required over 100 metal plates in order to repair his broken face. And he wasn't sure an entering return would be a possibility. Thanks to the medical help he received, BK made it through his recovery and returned to the ring. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I read somewhere else that he got hit with a surfboard. Thus was uh, breaking his jaw. It was hard to know at my, I had my face back together and stuff, and everything was cool, but it's hard to know at that point how you're going to proceed in the future in a business like ours, where you have to take kicks and punches into your face. So it's not an easy decision to make right there with how you are going to go about it. But I was lucky. I had the best doctor on the planet. And regardless of what, what he did, uh, he had said about me never wrestling again. I wrestled and his, his deal, he told me that I was going to end up being being stronger than I ever could be after I heal up. He told me that I was going to heal and be better than ever, which I did. I healed even bigger, better, stronger than I ever was when I was younger. And I became a superhero. It's funny, but I was just blessed with strength to being dead. Uh, so how do you come back from that? That is what happened to me. And that is what I did. I came back from that. And also, Hall of Famer Hulk Hogan and, and Barber were catching up this week, uh, a week after the public falling out they had in November 2017. The beef started when the Barber tweeted about the Hulkster spending time with his ex-wife, also accusing Hogan and his, and his ex-wife of brainwashing his daughter, which led to an estranged relationship with her. W Hall of Famer Jimmy Hart rem remains friends with both veterans and noted that this past April, that he that he believed that they were on great terms again, and Beefcake and Hogan tweeted the follow the following. And you can see a picture of that right back there for you. The WWE Network has added 55 episodes of All Star Wrestling to the vault. Well, the other one had said 60. Episodes are from 1981 to 1982. All Star was on the air from October 1971 through 1986 before being replaced by a Wrestling Challenge. Other stars that are on All Stars, I already told you, Jesse Devotty Ventura, Pedro Morales, Captain Lou Albano, Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, Pat Patterson, Andre the Giant, Mel Mascaras, uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine, Georgie Animal Steel, Johnny Rods, Sergeant Slaughter, Desi Rhodes, and the Fabulous Hulk Hogan. Yeah, he was going under the Fabulous name back then. A young businessman uh, did most of the play by play. All in pay per view results. Zero hour kicked off. Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks come out to welcome the crowd. Road Warrior Animal makes an appearance riding a motorcycle. Classic LOD style. So Cal uncensored using Rocky inspired gear for their match against the Briscoes. They had a red, white, and blue. Consequence Creed style uh, trunks. Briscoes versus So Cal uncensored. Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian. Winners of the match Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian by pinfall. Backstage, Alicia. A tout uh, talks to Kenny Omega about his upcoming match against Pentagon Jr. Omega says he is only nervous tonight because he wants his match to be memorial, memorable for all the fans watching. Tons of rest, uh, pro wrestling tees, commercials were shown uh, during the show. The over budget battle royal. All the wrestlers involved in the match started by surrounding the ring. Bully Ray was coming to the crowd. The Hurricane and Hot Tommy Dreamer are in this one as well. Dalton Kessel was on commentary. For the match, Bully immediately put Chico through a table. A lot of the action early on was taking place outside the ring. Punishment Martinez eliminated the best friends. Brian Cage takes out Cheeseburger and then goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Martinez. Hurricane with a choke Sam to Martinez and Cage for a big pop. Ethan Page eliminated Hurricane. Colt Kavada then send, sends Page out. Weapons have been introduced into the match as Dreamer starts smacking everyone with the weapons. Billy Gunn sends out Jimmy Jacobs. And punishment, Martinez. Billy, Billy then tosses out Austin Gunn. Billy drops Bully. Cage elim eliminated Billy Gunn. Marco got dumped by Bully. We're down to Cabana, Bully, Grace, and Cage. 
Crazy sequence by Grace and Cage. Grace sends Cage out of the match. Down to three. Bully eliminated Grace. Kabana versus Bully. Kabana with a chair shot. But he got tossed out. In comes Chico, who was out since the beginning of the match. Never got officially eliminated. It's actually Flip Gordon. He super kicks and to uh, tosses Bully out of the ring and wins the match. Flip Gordon will get a shot at the Ring of Honor World Championship later on in the evening. All in kicks off with the national anthem. MJF versus Matt Cross. Back and forth. Taunting for both wrestlers. MJF applauded his opponents. Wants to shake hands. And they get a cheap, cheap kick. Cross, cross nails Hurricane Rana sending MJF to the outside. Kicks up. Suzuki special. And he goes all the way to the stage to celebrate. Back in the ring. Cross looks to fly. But M MJ, MFJ rolls to the floor. Side of the ring. Cross charges in. MFJ. Pulls the referee in front of him. Cheap shot sends Cross into the ring post. Gut rush power bomb by MJF. He really works over Cross's arm. Cross recovers. Handspring elbow. Cover for a two count. MJF with a double stomp on Cross's arm. Package sh shoulder breaker. Covers for a two count. Back and forth action. MJF continues to work over on the arm. Snaps it over the top rope. Hits a power driver. Covers for a two count. Cross with a hand handspring cutter. Up top. Shooting star press. Covers for the three count. Matt Cross by Pinfall. Backstage, Sean Mooney. Yeah, formerly of WWE a long time ago. Actually, it was WWF a long time ago. Talks with the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Nick Aldis, who says it's an honor to speak one to one, uh, one of the greatest of all time. Aldis talks about his match with, with Cody and how important the title is to Rhodes. Aldis says, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Chris... The Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels versus Stephen Amell, the actor. Jerry Lynn is the referee for this match. Gets a nice pop from the crowd. Some shoving to get started as Dan Daniels go gets his dance on. From his Curry Man days, Amell and Daniels trade back and, back and forth chops. Amell will take down. Walks over, walks over Daniels. Amell tosses Daniels into the barricade and then brings out a table. Amell looks to plant Daniels from the apron. Down to the table, but Daniels blocks it and gets back into the ring. Amell take, takes issues with the referee. Daniels with an overhead suplex. Fallen Angel chant from the crowd. Daniels continues to keep Amell grounded, hits a na nails the lion's off. Thinks about a cover, but decides not to. Amell has looked really solid in this match thus far. Amell works his way back into the match, tosses Daniels into the corner, and looks to, co looks to do a coast to coast and nails it. Big pop from the crowd. Covers for a two count. Amell tries for another insecurity. Misses. Goes for the best miss all ever. Overshots a bit. No. Covers for a two count. Daniels looks to superplex Amell through the, the table on the outside. Amell knocks him, off, knocks him off down to the apron. Daniels flops down on the table. Amell dies, but nobody home. Table explodes. Lynn starts up the count. But then he decides to that he wants it, to see a winner and tosses both guys in the ring. Daniels is a happy... With that move, and argues with Lynn. Lynn tosses the referee, the referee shirt at Daniels. Amell with a scoreboard two count. Daniels swings away on Amell. Lynn keeps keeps stepping in though. Amell looks su super tired as he flips the double middle, middle fingers at Daniels. Amell reverses Daniels into a suplex for the bridge. Two count. Daniels up. Backbreaker. Best moves all ever, and that'll do it. Winner of the match, Christopher Daniels. After the match, they shake hands and celebrate a bit. Britt Baker versus Tessa Blanchard versus Chelsea Green versus Madison Rain. Daniel Dashwood and Manny Leon are all on commentary for this match. Baker out to Adam Cole's old interest. Blanchard hugs her dad, Tully, and Magnum T.A. before heading to the ring. The other legends are at ringside. They attempt to shake hands, but Green's split personality almost prevents her from shaking hands. Blanchard smacks Rain out of the ring. Green screams at Blanchard, which sends her running. Baker and Green with some back and forth pins. Back to knock, knock back to the floor. Green up on the rope. Walks, walks them a bit. Then hits a nice arm drag on Baker. Blanchard with a spear on Green. Then sends her out of the ring. Blanchard with a drop kick on Baker. Running elbow. Second time, she runs into a kick. Blanchard with a code breaker on Baker. Rain in the ring with a nice flipping pin. Two count. Rain with a hurricane on Blanchard. Then gets hit with, with a forearm. Blanchard presses Rain up in the, in the, Air and tosses her down on Green and Baker. Baker and Green back in the ring. 
on their own. Green with a big boot. Hits a big suicide dive on the floor. Blanchard with a forearm. It sends Green out, out to the floor. Tessa with a messy dive over the top rope. Rain hits a crossbody off the top. Down to the floor on all three wrestlers. Blanchard charges in the corner. Misses and hit, hits ring post. Green does a Zack Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. Chant. And kicks Blanchard. Rain with a tornado DDT. Green with a missile drop kick. On Blanchard. Rain with a cutter off, off the second rope. Slow, slow pin count. Or two count. Super kicks all over the place. More pin attempts. All, all for two counts. Blanchard with an elbow to the face. DDT by Blanchard on Green. Baker tries to break up the pin. But doesn't make it in time. Winner of the match. Tessa Blanchard by pinfall. Didn't see the pay-per-view myself. I wonder if she carried her newly won Impact Wrestling uh, title. After she won it last week on Impact. After the match, they all give each other a big hug and celebrate in the ring. Chico of FAM sitting at ringside. That's they call him Fat Ass Massa. Don't know. Never heard of him myself. Trent Beretta on commentary for the NWA title match. Nick Aldis versus Cody with Brandy Rhodes in the corner. And also in Nick Aldis' corner, Jeff Jarrett. Tim Storm, Sean DeBerry, and others. Unmentioned. Crowd very much behind Cody in this match. Earl Hebner was a referee. Crowd going wild for this one as the two wrestlers shake hands. Some early taunting from one of the wrestlers. Of course, Brandy was also out uh, with Cody in a fantastic outfit. The match, uh, is, match makes it its way out to the floor. Cody was hit outside dive and is pumped up. All this, then two places Rhodes and then shoves him into the ring post. Rose tossed into the ring. Big chops in the corner. Cody then drops down. Punches all this in the face. All a go dust style. That's been in his repertoire for about a year now. All this returns fire with a clothesline. Super kick by Cody. He tries for a crossroads. No uh, double cross body that sends all this out to the floor to take a breather. Cody looks for his splash to the floor and gets an elbow from all this. Hebner's checking on Cody and does the X signal. DDP comes out from the back to check on Cody. The very comes down, shoves DDP, gets in the ring, shoves the referee, and wants the match stopped. DDP comes into the ring and gives the very a diamond cutter. Crowd loved that spot. Aldous tossed Cody back into, into the ring, and he's bloodied up now. Aldous tries to win, but Cody fights back for a moment. Aldous tries to takes back control and hits the fall away Sam off the second rope. Aldous with a big splash off the second off the top rope, and then Cody locks into figure four. Aldous is able to spin out. Spin it around. It keep Co keeps Cody. Keeps it going until he gets to the ropes. Running power slam on the floor by Aldis. Brandy's checking on Cody as Aldis waits in the ring for him to potentially be counted out. But Cody got up. Tries for an out of battle slam. But ends up getting dumped. Uh, just dumping Aldis because of his back, back hurting. Cody hits a spinning Alabama slam, covers for a two count, disaster kick by Cody. Nobody home. All this uh, locks in a clover release submission. Cody is able to claw, to claw his way towards the ropes and his wife. Brady tries to give him some advice, and all this yanks him away and hits a set out power driver. All this climbs up to the top rope and went for an elbow drop, but Brandy joined in to co uh, cover Cody and took the full brunt of that elbow. Crowd with an a hole chant. Uh, going for the cover for a two count. Cody uh, rallied to be out of it now as Aldis slapped him. Cody with a disaster kick. Crossroads. Covers for a two. Uh, crowd thought it was a three count. Back and forth strikes. Co Cody strikes for tries for a murder breaker, but Aldis counters. Sunset flip attempt. Cody sits down, stacks up Aldis, and gets a one, two, three. Winner by Pin Paul and the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Cody Rhodes. Hangman Page versus Joey Janela with Penelope Ford in his corner. Chicago Street Fight. Back and forth action in the, in the ring. Janela ends up on the outside. Page up top, uh, up to the top rope and hits a huge moonsault on Janela. He grabs a chair, set it in the middle of the ring. Janela with four arms, but Page who wrote a rolling elbow. Pump out of Holloway slam into the chair. Page uncovers a cracker barrel at ringside. Product placement. An attempt to launch Janela into it, but Page ends up getting tossed into it. Janela jumps Page out, or out into the crowd. Janela sets up a chair, uses it to, to leap off the barrel, and crashes into Page. 
Jeno then rolls the barrel at Paige. He jumps over it. Donkey Kong style, only to get smacked a few times by Janela. Paige uh, hits a buckshot lariat over the barricade. Paige brings the table from under the ring. Tosses Janela into the ring. Janela gets back into the match and gets the first pinfall attempt. Janela then pulls a ladder from out from under the ring and brings a bar bar barrel over. Puts the ladder on it and on the apron. Paige is dropped on the ladder. Janela goes up, goes to the top rope. Paige catches him, torture rack position. Burning hammer to, on the ladder and it barely budges. Ford screams out as they crash as they crash down. Paige brings out a bag. Ford jumps on Paige's back to slow him down and he jump he dumps her off. She then slip uh, spins him and slaps Paige's ear. He swings at her. She flips away. He charges. She does the matrix dodge. He hits a center that sends Paige out of the ring. Ford up top. Hits a splash of down on Paige. She hammers away on him some more as he fall, falls on the table. Janela off the top rope with an elbow drop through the table. Both are out in the entranceway. Ford helps Janela put two tables together. He goes to get Paige, gets smacked, and then powerbomb off the stage down through one table. Didn't quite make make it the second though. In the second. Ouch spot. Paige brings Janela back in the ring. Buckshot Larry. Right of Patches hits. Covers for a two count. Four break up the pinfall. She has a bag that Paige brought into the ring. She snatches it away from her. He snatches it away from her. Dumps out the talking boots. Cry with a boot shit. Paige is attracted and kind of freaks out. She goes to pick on, on up the any super kicks her. Paige starts yelling at one of the boots, and Janela nails a master super kick. And then Janela brings the ladder into the ring, along with the with a ladder. The crowd with a safety first chant. Janela heads heads up the ladder, gets knocked down. He pulls a phone out of the second bag in the ring and swings away on Janela's head. Paige with a right of passage through the table, covers for a three count. Winner of the match, Adam Hangman Page by Pin Paul. After the match, video shown. Of Joey Ryan rising up. A bunch of druid like dudes dressed like, well, you can imagine, walk out to the stage. Joey, Joey's music hits and he heads out to the ring as Paige watches. Ryan poses for the crowd, puts on some baby oil. Paige can't believe Ryan is alive. Ryan drops Paige and he ends up being carried to the back by Ryan's phallic druids. Jay Lethal. Champion versus Flip Gordon with Brandy Rhodes for the Ring of Honor World, World Championship. Black Machizo heads out with Lanny Popo to Macho Man's entrance music. <coughs> Lisa shakes hands with, with, with Flip, then notices Brandy on the outside and treats her like she's Mrs. Elizabeth, moving her towards corner a couple of times. Back and forth action, Brandy ends up in the ring, and Machismo lifts her up on his shoulder like he did with Elizabeth. Uh, Brandy's, ha Brandy's had enough and Pats his shoulder, which brings Jay Lethal back out. He looks around, confused, as Flip goes to work on him. Flip avoids Lethal with a bunch of kip-ups. Lethal is sent out to the floor, suicide dive two times. Then Flip with a screw over the top rope. Flip with a nice spinning crossbody. Cover, covers for a two count. Lethal thought he had Flip, but hulks up. Man does a Hulk Hogan sequence. Big boot and all. Flip with a Pele kick. Springboard sling blade. Lethal up top. Tries for Flip tries for her coronado but gets blocked. Lethal will cut her off the top rope. Lethal hits the lethal injection cover and that covers for the pinball. And that'll do it. We're gonna match a lethal. After the match, Brandy checks on Flip. Lethal puts his hands out and Flip shakes it. But holds on and then gives him a hug. From the back, Bully Ray runs in and hits a double clothesline. He then swings the chain at Flip over and over. Lanny gets into the ring and Bully just kick kicks him between the legs. Bully grabs a table and brings it into the ring. Out from the back comes Colt Cabana, who spears and swings away on Bully. Lethal Flip and Colt triple power bomb Bully through the table. Pentagon Jr. versus Kenny Omega. It was up next. Cerro Moreno by Pentagon Jr. He goes for another, and Omega gives him a slap to the face. Pentagon's at work with a super kick that sends Omega out to the floor. Both back in the ring, and Pentagon hits a lone blower. 
Omega out to the floor. Pentagon looks to fly, but Omega hits her, her, her Corona. Now Pentagon's on the floor, and Omega looks to fly. Pentagon back in the ring. Now the sling blade. Pentagon with a flip over the top rope and down to the floor, taking out Omega. Pentagon with a big chop. Omega tries to fight back and gets launched into the barricade. Omega runs forward and gets power slam on the floor. Back in the ring, multiple chops from both wrestlers. Pentagon working on the back of Omega's leg. Omega with a you can't escape, but Pentagon lifts the knees. Omega with a tornado DT. Uh, Pentagon out to the floor. Omega up and off the cr top rope. Hits a crossbody. V trigger attempt gets kicked. This is the elbow strike. Full Nelson drag snap dragon on Pentagon. Omega looks for a one winged angel. Nope. One more hits. Covers for a two count. Omega gets tied up in a in the corner. And Pentagon hits a double stop. Covers for a two count. V trigger lands on Pentagon. Power bomb. Another V trigger. Covers. Pentagon grabs the ropes. Pump handle file driver. Omega's pin. Two count. Both are out on the apron. Pentagon asks for the V trigger. He kicks Omega and hits a package file driver on the apron. Crowd has lost it for that move. Pentagon gets back in the ring. Double stomp. Covers for a two count. Omega with a package file driver. Covers no. Omega with a, another V trigger. One wing nail. No. Couldn't get a three count. Pentagon is looking to break Omega's arm now. As he stands it back. Package file driver. Still alone get the three count. Crowd on her feet and clapping down. Pentagon tries for a kick. Blocked by a big V trigger by Omega. Reverse Horror Run. Covers for a two count. A 20th week trigger hits by Kenny. One wing angle. Lands clean. And covers for the pinfall. Winner of the match, Kenny Omega. After the match, Kenny gets up. The lights go out and then come back on. He gets attacked from behind by Pentagon. But that's not Pentagon. It's Chris Jericho. Dressed up in a Pentagon outfit. He beats up Omega and then gets on the mic. Kenny, I'll see you on the Jericho cruise. And he leaves through the crowd. Jericho then shows up. And shoves the table, knocking Don Callis down, kind of making fun of what just happened to Jim Ross. Backstage, Marty's girl walks down the hallway before his match and stamps the fingers of two dudes. Kazushka Akata versus Marty Stroll. Some mind games are played early on by both wrestlers. Girl uses the mat wrestling skills to count Okada. He tries running over Okada, but he. Doesn't have much luck as O'Connor flexes his pecs a bit. Skrull tries it again. Looks to hurt himself more by doing that. Skrull gets O'Connor out to the floor. Hits a, back, a kick to the side of the head. Skrull skins the cat back into the ring. And there's a suicide dive. Skrull lands a couple of chops to O'Connor's chest. And then tosses him back in the ring. O'Connor gets, gets back some, some momentum. Both end up on the floor. And O'Connor hits a DDT on Skrull out on the floor. Okada finally tosses Skrull into the ring. Hits a senton into the ring. Skrull tries to pour some weak chops. But Okada smashes him in the face with an elbow strike. Okada locks in a straight jacket submission. Marty is able to slowly counter and hit a low blower. The crowd fairly split for this match. Skrull, Skrull fakes a huge kick, uh, a high kick, and takes out the knee. Skrull dodges a charging Okada. Hits a tornado DDT for covers for a two count. Back elbow by Okada. DDT covers for two count. Skrull able to bust out a brain buzzer. Crowd loved that and gave a heavyweight chant. Skrull tried to lift him up again. Doesn't work. He gets amped up. Tries again. Nope. Okada hits an air raid crash. Covers for two count. Both end up on the second rope. Okada is trying to knock Skrull down to the mat. But he won't fall. Skrull finally smacks Okada. He hits a superflex. Multiple pinning combinations. Finish with a cl close pin on Okada. Skrull with a power bomb pin for a two count. Crowd is reacting to any power moves Skrull is pulling off. And it's great. Okada looking for a tombstone. Skrull won't allow it. Counter with a DDT and tries for his own tombstone. Okada counters and hits a tombstone. Calls for his rainmaker. Okada gives a 205 hand signal. But Skrull grabs his fingers and snaps them. Okada follows up with a drop kick. Rainmaker misses. Cro cross face chicken wing. And is nearly locked in on Okada. Okada is able to stand up and drops down on Skrull. Who then rises up and looks to lock in the cross face. Chicken wing again. Okada rolls through. Covers for a two count. Okada ends up getting shoved into the referee. Skrull grabs his umbrella. Swings. Misses. Rainmaker attempt. But he opens the umbrella. Smacks Okada. Smacks Okada with it. Hits Okada with a Rainmaker. Covers. Super close three count. 
Wow. Crowd is all on their feet. Crossway chicken winning attempt. Okada hits a rainmaker, but it can't get, get up to make the pin. The two stand in the middle of the ring. Skrull spits at him. Sats him in the face. Skrull goes for a finger snap. Gets two rainmakers. And Okada finally put, puts him down for, for, for good. Winner of the match. Kazushka Okada. Young Bucks, Dakota Ibushi versus Rey Mysterio, Phoenix, and Bandito. Matt and Bandito uh, start the match. Matt was out to the floor in a, in a hurry. Bandito with a nice flip over the top rope. Nick with the blind tag. Double hip toss, drop kick. Phoenix in there as Nick tries to dance on the ropes. But slips out. Hits an arm drag. Cutter. Pinned for a two count. Action has been fast and furious. And it looks like the main event is running out of time for the show. Ibushi and Bandito in the ring. Standing moves off by Ibushi. Covers for a two count. Phoenix and Bandito get clocked with a Pele kick. Nick is tagged in. Super kicks back elbow. Spinning kick on both Bandito and, and Phoenix. He clears out of the ring. Step up. Flip to the outside as Ibushi hits a moonsault to the floor. Mysterio with Hurricanrana sending Nick to the floor. Springboard moonsault to the floor by Mysterio. Action back inside the ring. Ibushi with a German suplex. With a bridge for a two count. Triple super kick misses on Bandito. And he hits a triple Hurricanrana. Mysterio tagged in. Super kick throws Matt in, into Nick. Tries for the 619. But Matt catches him. Nick and Ibushi on the apron. Phoenix runs the ropes. And boots Ibushi in the face. Matt throws, Matt throw into the ropes. Super kick by Phoenix. Six one by uh, six one nine by Mysterio. Rolling the chair by Phoenix. Bandito nails a reverse horror on Matt. Frog slash by Mysterio covers covers for a two count. Crowd with a daddy chant. Bandito with a backflip blockbuster on Matt off the top rope. Pin. Nick breaks it up. Super kick party by the Young Bucks. Meltzer driver by Nick and Matt covers and that'll do it. As they head to rush to finish, as pay per view just. Beat the time limit for that. And after the event, uh, after the event, com uh, comments from uh, SI.com by Justin Barrasso was intended for all for the uh, all-in pay-per-view in Chicago. Posted a ton of video from the event, including what happened after the after show went off there. Mysterio thanks the crowd at this link. The Bucks admit the main, main event was an intense spot, uh, spot with the less time originally planned. And another link. The Bucks admit in the main event was intense at this link. As it was originally planned. All in after show. Matt Jackson on the origin of the 10,000 asses in, in 10,000 seats. At this link. A, co a Cody with all in two T's. Double or nothing. As Cody with all in double or nothing T's. At this link as well. And he also comments, nobody, no man, no company, no entity owns pro wrestling. We own pro, re pro wrestling. And he also comments on that same thing. Also, Kenny Omega, I give the credit in the world to Cody and the Young Bucks for what they've done today. At this link. Uh, Kenny Omega comments again. You guys know where I come from. You know where people went or want me to go. But guess freaking what? Guess freaking what? What we did today Blew everything out of the water. At this link. And the latest word, woke up word of the week. Video by, by Matt Hardy can be seen at this link. And this word, this uh, week's word is SPY. But it's spelled SP. You know, like ESPN. SP Awards. So there you go. I get, I get it at this link. Well, uh, WWE main event, spoilers. Tyler Breeze defeated Mike Kanellis. Mojo Raleigh defeated Zack Ryder. Raw was open live from the Shots John Chotten Science Center from Columbus, Ohio. Michael Cole welcomes us to the show. And we're joined in by Corey Grace and Renee Young, who is filling in for Jonathan Coachman. He's away on assignment during the golf channel. We go to the ring. Out comes Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre. As his music hits, Braun takes the mic. Is there something he wants us to see before he gets started? We get a video package with Braun, Ziggler, and McIntyre taking out the shield from last week. Drew takes the mic when he wants everyone to take a moment and look to look at them. Drew says the shield has had their time now and it's over. Drew says we're looking at the new kings of the jungle around here and we're going to feast on the shield's bloody carcasses. Ziggler says they will be the most dominant force in WWE history. We're dominant. Were more dominant than the Nation of Domination, DX, and the Shield. Uh, Ziggler says the Shield started this, but they are going to end it. 
Miz again arrests and we see the shield in the crowd. Reigns, Ambrose, and champion Seth Rollins come out through the crowd. Acting Raw General Manager. Uh, Conservative Corbin. And I think Finn Balor even made a comment later on this. On the segment as well. He uh, brings out the Raw roster to get in between the two sides. The Shield takes out a bunch of Raw superstars at ringside. They surround the ring as Braun, Ziggler, and McIntyre look on. Concentrated one brings out more superstars from the back. And the Shield fights them all off at ringside. The Shield hits the ring and six men, all six men brawl, breaks out in the ring. More superstars running down from the back. And the whole roster is out there now. Full of bodies. Raw keeps breaking out the superstars. Trying to hold them back. Braun, Ziggler, and McIntyre are led to the back. As the shield is held at ringside, fan chat lets a fight now. The shield breaks free and runs to the back. As they were fighting backstage, back to the right, we see what just happened. Cameras cut backstage and security is involved in breaking the ball up now. The shield is loaded into a police van, which I thought was an ambulance van, and hauled away from the air arena. They have been arrested and booked. The Bella Twins versus the Riot Squad. Back to the ring. The Riot Squad waits in the ring. Luke Morgan, Sarah Logan. And Ruby Riot. JoJo does the ring introductions. Bella Twins. Nikki Bella and Brie Bella are out next for their Raw brand in ring return. And we go right back to commercial. Back to the right. Nikki starts off with Liv. They taunt each other. And Nikki goes after Liv. Uh, she hits the ropes. Logan tags in. Ruby looks on from the ringside. Liv and, uh, Liv and uh, Liv, Logan and Nikki lock up. Logan takes it to Rhodes, works over Bella, takes it uh, to Logan down for a two count, more, and works on her arm. Nikki takes Logan back down and keeps her grounded by the arm. Logan avoids rack attack 2.0 and slams Nikki. Uh, Logan keeps Nikki down by her arm. Back uh, as they battle back and forth and back from a break as they go to commercial. Wyatt Squad remains in control. Nikki finally gets a hot tag and unlo unloads as Liv comes in. Nikki with more offense and a big kick out. Out of the corner for a two count. Logan breaks up the pin. Nikki tosses Logan to the floor. Ruby hits the apron, but Nikki decks her. Ree runs the ropes and lands bad. Lands a bad. Lands bad on the dive to Logan and, and Ruby. As Liv, Liv and Nikki get, go to work, but Liv can't get the pin. Nikki then hits rack attack 2.0 for the pin fall and win. After match, Bella stands tall in the middle of the ring as we go to replace. Right squad backs up the ramp. Back, uh, we go back to the announcer still to come. Shawn Michaels will be here. Also, home star, hometown star, Alexa Bliss faces Natalya and the B-team defends their titles against the revival. Concentrated Corbin backstage on the phone with Walker, Mr. Stafford, and my man, supposedly. Corbin says that the Shield has been arrested. Bellas are back, uh, and Wall is, is on track. Corbin hangs up after th thanking Stephanie. Finn Balor appears, and he's all smiles. They have words, and Balor says, Corbin, Needs to start acting like a man. Balor wants his rematch it's Cor with Corbin tonight to find out what better man, who's better man really is. Corbin says Balor tossed a good game for a little guy, but he will shut him up tonight. As he does say, he acts like he's constipated. He stole that. I guess he watches some of my videos. So I've been calling him constipated. Back from the break, Corbin versus Balor was announced announced for later as your main event. Cole then talked about. Supporting Connor's Cure and Pediatric Awareness Month in September. Charlie is backstage with uh, Chad Gable and Bobby Roode, a newly formed tag team. She asked what led to this partnership. Gable says he ha he keeps a close eye on everything that goes around here, but uh, lately he's been captivated by how Roode carries himself in the spotlight. Gable wanted in on that, and here we are. Chad Gable and Bobby Roode versus the decision. And we'll just cut to, to, to the uh, chase. Chad Gable defeated. Uh, the Ascension. It was mostly Chad Gable all in the match. Bobby Roode got a little bit of offense, and Chad dominated the match. Gable with a cannonball from the from the apron to Connor on the floor. Gable goes up top, drop kicks Victor on the face. Gable kept kept, kept control and nailed nail the German suplex with the bridge for the pinfall. After the match, Roode enters the ring and gets fired up when raising Gable's arm. Gable's music hits and go to replays. Roode and Gable seem to really be excited. Elias backstage talking with a staffer, as he has done for the last two weeks. As he walks off, we go to commercial. Uh, Elias introduces himself, starts playing. He sings about getting 
hit by Hall of Famer Trish Stratus last week. And he just takes shots at Columbus. And then says, then Ohio State. Music interrupts. Out comes Alexa Bliss to a pop as well as Mickey James and Alicia Fox. Bliss reminds Elias how she's from Columbus and gra graduated high school in this very building. She goes to Ohio. She does an Ohio State chant along with the crowd, and the crowd goes along with it. Bliss then turns and calls him minus C. Bliss says everything Elias said about her hometown is 100% true, and she should uh, she couldn't move out of this dump. Dump fast enough. Uh, she goes on and mentions tonight's match with Natalya, the Evolution match with Trish, and the Hell of Hell match with Raw Women's Champion Ronda Rousey. Bliss asks Elias to play the song he was about to perform because she wants to walk with Elias. Elias starts playing. But Rousey's music interrupts, and out she comes. Rousey waits on the ramp, and next comes Natalia. They head to the ring together. Bliss uh, and her crew looks on with a talk strategy with Rousey. Back to commercial. The match is up, and Natalia tosses Bliss and hits the basement drop kick for a two count. Bliss rocks Natalia with a big right hand. Bliss goes to work on Natalia in the corner. Rebby warns her, allowing Fox and James to get a few shots, shots in. Bliss drops Natalia with a DDT, toss Rousey. Bliss stares at Rousey and applies an arm bar to Natalia in the middle of the ring. Natalia taps out. Where is the match? Alexa Bliss. After the match, after the match, Bliss keeps the hold applied until Rousey enters the ring. Bliss tries to come back in, but Rousey catches her. Rousey and uh, Fox and James run in for a triple team, but Rousey fights them off. Bliss takes out Rousey's knee from behind. Bliss brings Rousey to the floor and sends her into the ring steps. Brings Bliss brings her back to the ring. But Rousey fights back, sending Bliss out of the ring. Rousey checks on Natalia while Bliss blocks some James back up the ramp. Rousey views the kids and the two sides tear each other down. We get a look at an opening segment with this the shield. Again, Mike Rome is at the local police uh, precinct and his reported the shield were fingerprinted and booked. Constipated Corbin backstage yelling at a sapper. Strowman, Ziggler, and McIntyre walk in. Strowman suggests Corbin find them some competition. Ziggler says they aren't dancing him because this is their show. Ziggler wants a Raw Tag Team title shot. Drew isn't uh, Drew against B, B Team, but Corbin says they've already promoted the match with the Revival versus the B Team. It sounds like Ziggler and McIntyre are heading off to, to attack the Revival so they can't compete. And that's exactly what happens. Baron, uh, Baron uh, Braun, and Corbin stand, uh, stare each other down. Braun suggests Corbin do his job tonight and finds him, him some competition. Raw Tag Team title match, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler versus the B Team as they beat up the, the Scott Dawson Dash Wilder backstage. Uh, Drew starts off with a cheap shot to Dallas and uh, uh, with shots to Axel. Drew tosses Axel around the ring, tosses uh, Ziggler into the double teaming. Dallas pulls the rope down and sends Drew to the floor. Axel with pin attempt on Ziggler. B Team keeps control and sends their opponents out of the ring as we go to commercial. Uh, back to the rake. Drew's in control of Dallas. They rally for the fans. Fans rally for Dallas, but Drew back, backs him down. Ziggler comes in, keeps Dallas down. Dallas fight, fights back, but Ziggler kicks him in the gut and Drop kicks him in the face. Ziggler nails a two count. Drew tags back in, beats Dallas in the corner. McIntyre with chops and trash talking as Dallas placed on the, on the top. Dallas fights back and nails the Tornado DDT. Drew uh, tries to stop a tag. Dallas counters a move, hits neck breaker. Axel and, and Ziggler tag in at the same time. Axel unloads and fi gets fired up. Axel gets the B team chant going. Axel blocks the counter and hits a perfect flex, but Drew breaks it to pin. Drew slams Axel, but Axel comes right from behind and beats on him. Drew sends Dallas face first into his corner. Referee backs Drew out, out of the ring. Ziggler goes to tag, but Axel rolls him up for a two count. Ziggler then super kicks Axel and lays him out. Drew tags back in for the zigzag. Play more combo. And Drew covers for the pin and wins the tag team titles. And I will be doing a second part to this video. So peace out, single Columbia. Thanks again. Peace out. If you don't know, just comment, brother.